and so I just think um, that somebody like you is a perfect example of somebody that should be teaching business, should be teaching leadership, because you're the kind of guy, I can tell you, and I've met you, and we've only known each other for five minutes now, but I, can, I would follow you. Like if, if you said, hey, look, we're going to go start a company, we're going to go start a business, you're the kind of guy that I would want to follow. And I think that's very, very important for all the listeners to understand it, you don't have to be perfect. You, you know, I, I don't, I think, you know, leadership is not perfection, but there's got to be some sort of stability behind your actions and your words. Do you kind of agree with that? Is this making any sense to you? Yeah, you need a, you need a solid grounding is the way that I describe it. And being an entrepreneur is probably the hardest thing that you could ever choose to do as a human being in life. And people think that they come from a job like I did, I made the, I made the classic mistake. Don't, don't do what Rob did. And the mistake is I, I left a, a really stable job with, you know, a, a career ahead of me and left that job. My missus didn't have a job to go to. I had two small children. I had no source of income and I, you know, excuse the pun, but I went all in. I had no choice but to, to go for it. And sometimes going all in on something like that is not necessarily a good idea. What you need to do is get your ducks in a row first, get yourself organized, remove the financial duress that you might find yourself under, and then incrementally move towards your goals. Don't just down tools and have a tantrum one day and dive in and start a business thinking that it's going to explode and you're going to be a millionaire tomorrow because it just doesn't work like that. And I really believe that the, the key to success is in, in its planning and in its execution as well. And, and I use, uh, I learned a fighter pilot analogy a, a while back, just a, a military analogy that works for me. And anyone that's ever hung out with fighter pilots understands that they don't just wake up in the morning, come to work and go, well, where are we going, man? I don't know. Let's go out to the range and do something. That, it's an extensive process. What they do is they plan brief, they execute, then they X gap while they're doing it. And then they debrief extensively and the planning and debriefing stages go for a long time. The planning stage is probably one to three hours. The debriefing stage can be as many as four hours. So for a one hour sortie, when somebody goes out flying, trying to, you know, flying to point A to do exercise X to come back to point B, it's a massive amount of planning. And I've taken that into my entrepreneurial life and, Everything that I do, I overlay that framework, I overlay that system for myself, which gives me some clarity and it, and it removes the uncertainty. And what it does is, is it gives me the opportunity to move forward and check as I go. Am I moving closer to my target? Am I getting there? Is it incrementally working for me? And I can test and adjust as I go, which is a really great way to do things in business. And it all comes from a solid foundation. Oh, I love that, man. Well said. Wow. I wish we could... Uh, if you just heard that, rewind it, listen to that again, because that's so critical. I mean, I'm always talking. I mean, obviously I'm in money. I'm in the money game and I teach people about their finances, teach people about how to, but the first thing I do is I say, organize, get organized, right? Yeah. Plan, have a plan so that you can execute that plan. But you know what I find honestly is I find so many people with, that are making hundreds of thousands of dollars with no plan mm. and no financial software and no uh, written budget and no, like, I, I mean, I sit down once a week. I mean, there's not a week that goes by that I don't sit out at least once a week for at least one hour. Now there's some weeks that I plan for even longer, but at least once a week, I, I find an hour to sit down, review my plan, plan, review my financials, review what's going on. Now I'm always checking my investments and things like that. But as far as my, my, I, I run my family life like a business. I run my family financials like a business. I don't wing it. And that's the mistake a lot of people make. Do you, do you kind of agree with that a little bit? Yeah, hundred percent. You know, if, if you're operating without a plan, you're planning to fail. It's really as, as simple as that. And I look at a lot, I deal with a lot of people in my digital marketing agency over the last 15 years, I've helped hundreds of businesses, all sorts of startups. And it's, it's a very, it's actually a pretty rare thing that people have got an extensive plan. And the biggest mistake I see people make with that in, you know, in line with your comments there 
is related to entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are the worst for it. People that are business owners are slightly different to entrepreneurs. You know, they might have a physical business in the real world. They're not starting off. They're already established. So I want to put that aside and just focus in on the entrepreneur side of it. Because what I really see, I, I see happen with those folks is they have a plan to make the money. They've got a, they've got an idea and you know, the entrepreneur side of it can be, it can kind of encroach into investing as well. I'm going to put my money over here in this property. Or I'm going to put it into this thing over here and I'm going to make this money and they make good decisions, sound decisions. They get the money, but now they don't have a plan. So as you say, I see people all the time. They've got hundreds of thousands of dollars. They made all this cash and it's really good for them, but what are you going to do with it all? You got to send that forth to go and create more babies. Otherwise you'll send it forth and go and buy a Porsche that you don't need or some unnecessary things in your life that you don't need. So people always have a plan in, in the world that kind of I live in. They have a plan to make the money, but they don't have a plan to do something with it when they get there because making the money is actually not always as hard as what people think. If you've got a plan to start off with, you can get going with that and it's a little bit of a grind to get started. But once you get started, if you've made good decisions and it's happening like you're expecting it to, what are you going to do with it? So make a plan to do something with it. Otherwise, you're going to lose a lot. Uh, what, what um, when you started off in, with your digital, because I want to know more about your digital marketing business. Mm -hmm. If you can tell me a little bit more about that and, and, and what you really do for clients and how all that works out. And then also maybe just kind of touch on maybe the, the beginnings of that, you know, maybe any struggles that you might've had, any, how you overcame them. If you could just expound a little bit on that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so just to be really clear, I'm not doing that anymore. I stepped out of the wheelhouse. I'm still, I still do it in a consulting capacity, but I don't do client based work on a day to day basis. Like I did with the agency, my brother and I work together. And that's a really cool thing to, to work with my bro. He's five years older than me. I, I always say he's not going to hear me say this, but he's the older, the fatter, slower one, the bolder one. So I got all the looks, the speed and the leanness. It's kind of fun. So I like to make fun of him. He just kind of shakes his head when I make those jokes. Anyway, my, my background in, in digital started in my first company way back in 2002 when I first left the military. So we kicked off and my two mates got out of the military before me and they would, they'd started the company and they generated a bit of sales. And I said, boys, we need, we need a sales team is what we need. So we hired a telemarketing company back in the day and they started hitting the phones and all of a sudden all the sales started happening and our job was to go and fulfill. And very quickly someone needed to organize all of that. And that was me. I was an ops guy. And then I started organizing people, hiring people. And I quickly realized that on the phones, the girls, making the calls, people would say, oh, well, what's your website? And I'd be like, what's a what? That's how way back when it was, right? Like I'm showing my age, I only look like I'm 25, but you know, that's because I live a good <laughs> life, but I'm a little, quite a bit older than what people think. And way back when, you know, building a website was expensive. It was sort of 30, $40,000. You know, you have some uh, ninja coding it in, in this thing called HTML that I'd never heard. What? HTML what? Or I, what $50,000? No, we're not doing that. And I kind of learned to do it myself. And that's really where that's the genesis of it. If I trace it all the way back to its roots, that's what it was. It was out of necessity. So we built that website, got it going. It was all, it all did what it needed to do. And just over time, I, I kind of had other businesses, other opportunities and Hey, we need a website for that. Okay. I can, I know how to do that now. And then I realized that I could get other people to do that. And I sort of fell into it. Then around 2007, this thing came out called the iPhone. Remember that? And mm -hmm. I was like, what? An app? What's an app? What's an app? Wow, that's cool. Show me that phone. That's stupid, that phone. Those phones are for girls or something, aren't they? It's funny, <laughs> right? Like you look back at the, I'm not having one of those. Look at my flip phone. That's way better than that. You know, I can, click my, I can kick my flip phone like a football. If I drop it, it doesn't matter. It's not going to break. That thing's going to break as soon as I drop it. Anyway, you know, after all of that kind of went away, I put my ego out of the way. I got myself this fancy thing called an iPhone and learned how to develop apps. And that's where it really kicked off. Um, so to begin with, I was an app developer. I built a whole bunch of them for a whole bunch of people. And, you know, if I could rewind the clock, I would have stuck with that a bit longer because it was really lucrative. And then over time, that just redeveloped into other things. I had a business, um, had a bunch of people working with me and for me, and then uh, it moved into sort of websites 
And then it moved into advertising back in the day with AdWords where you can get AdWords clicks for 80 cents, 50 cents, you know, pour it on baby and watch the traffic come to your website and we'd work out how to get the, the, the traffic to convert. And then the advent of social media just kind of progressed there. It followed a natural progression. Thank you for watching our short clips on Alonzo Academy. If you'd like to watch the next short clip, click here. If you'd like to watch the entire podcast, click here.